Chief Executive Officer for Area Resources for Community and Human Services, better known as ARCHES. And ARCHES is one of many organizations concerned about the rise in gun violence across the city of St. Louis. Like last summer, St. Louis continues to draw national attention for the number of children shot and murdered in the region. Due to these murders, Arches was invited to sit down with Governor Mike Parson in the fall of 2019 to strategize how Arches would develop programming to assist crime victims and the communities these victims live in. Sadly, this summer's gun violence reports paint the same picture as 2019, and to that end, Arches could not think of a better time to announce the Neighborhood Healing Network. The Missouri Department of Social Services has awarded a $1 million grant to Arches to oversee the Neighborhood Healing Network through five not-for-profit hubs. They include Better Family Life, the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater St. Louis, Fathers and Family Support Center, Mission St. Louis, and the Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis. The $1 million grant comes from the Federal Victims of Crimes Act. Individuals experiencing violence and trauma suffer from long-term negative health consequences including behavioral, mental, and physical health concerns. This trauma has devastating implications for individual success in critical areas such as personal education and personal employment and long-term neighborhood stabilization. The unique strategy behind the Neighborhood Healing Network is to address both individual crimes and crime victims and the victimized communities. Crime and violence impact not only the individual, but also family members, friends, and neighbors. It is now my pleasure to introduce our project manager, the leader of this project, Arches Vice President of Family Support Initiatives, Mr. Les Johnson, and Les is going to delve into what each nonprofit hub will do and how Arches is providing strategic and technical assistance. Les, it's your party. Good afternoon. As Mr. Kimbrough mentioned, Arches is partnering with five well-known community organizations. Better Family Life, Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater St. Louis, Fathers and Families Support Center, Mission St. Louis, and the Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis. These organizations were chosen due to their locations across St. Louis City and their expertise to carry out neighborhood healing network services. Each organization will utilize the funding to identify those impacted by trauma, help reduce the stigma of receiving mental health care and trauma support, provide participants with resources available to overcome barriers to education and employment, creating healthier families, and with assistance from Alive and Well Communities and the Crime Victim Center, hubs will organize educational programming for the public about abuse, victim rights, laws, violence, and available trauma-informed care services. Neighborhood Healing Network hubs are currently in the process of hiring training staff. The Neighborhood Healing Network will officially begin services on August the 24th, 2020. Arches' role in all of this is to use the funding to help each nonprofit hub carry out these services. We created the, needle, the, the Neighborhood Healing Network program structure and will provide hands-on assistance and program and physical and fiscal management, marketing and communications, data collection, 
reporting, and evaluation. By providing trauma-informed care and services, the, healing, the Neighborhood Healing Network will work to improve educational, economic, and health outcomes for individuals and communities. Updates and events can be found on our Facebook page, STL Neighborhood Healing Network. And now we want to give you an opportunity to ask Mr. Kimbrough and I any questions that you may have about this new addition that we're excited to unveil. Does this program fill gaps in services? I mean, do you think that there have not been enough programs to support crime victims to begin with? Some of those hub organizations have done that to some extent. Does this fill a gap? Yes, I would say it fills a, a needed gap in the terms of actually being able to outreach to individuals that have been indirectly impacted by crime. So most of your traditional crime victim services are individuals that have been personally impacted by crime. Our program will also allow for those uh, individuals and communities who have been exposed to chronic uh, violence, trauma within communities. Someone in their family may have been impacted by crime. They may have been exposed to gunshots every day within those communities. And so those services are not currently being provided. In essence, what we're looking at with the community strategy is the realization that there is PTSD occurrences that occur in the communities that we'll be serving. And so give us some more examples of exactly what programs then could help someone who has PTSD from just being a member of our community. Right. So, for instance, if an individual um, uh, who's referred into the program meets the criteria, they've been a victim or, or have, have, have uh, had exposure to crime within the last two years, then they could possibly receive counseling services. Along with those counseling services, they may also find that they are in need of additional community resources, such as assistance with um, uh, their uh, rental assistance, utility assistance, and in some cases, individuals may decide that after receiving these services, they're more able or inclined to receive employment services. So we also would have an opportunity to provide them with access to employment and training programs as well. How many individuals do you anticipate being able to serve? We're not sure at this time as this is a pilot, and so we're looking to see exactly how far we're able to reach. We think that um, Using the uh, virtual platform will allow for us to have a much larger reach uh, at this time than uh, traditional reach. We believe that the uh, STL community is looking for this type of support, and individuals are uh, more likely to participate in that this is something that has not been offered in the past, and these are supports that uh, have just not traditionally been offered to our local community. Is there a model for the program, a different city or a different program that you guys looked at? No, this is actually a, a new system built for us in this community, so we're creating the system. We are looking at, uh, uh, to identify through this pilot what works, looking at uh, lessons learned, and then tweaking the program as we move forward. So we believe that we are actually building a pilot, and this will, be, will really become the first of its kind. One of the arches advantages the fact that we have a strategic services department that specializes in identifying activities that have occurred in other communities, and then looking at our on-the-ground operating departments, combining the two of those to create a strategic, on-the-ground, customized program, not only in this particular instance, but in all of our activities. Hope that funding sources will continue. I mean, it's obviously kind of capped right now at a million, but are you looking forward in years to come to getting additional funding? Yes, and that's why um, Arches will be uh, very intimately involved in the uh, development of the programs and services, meeting with all the hubs um, um, on a regular basis, identifying what's working, and then also making sure that the program is being implemented with fidelity in the way that we intended the program to be implemented. What will be the measurables? Will it be just the number of individuals served, or what other kind of measurables will you be looking at? We, some of the measurables we're, that we're looking at is the uh, utilization of resources. Uh, in past, I believe that individuals who are seeking services like this didn't know what was available, how to access them, where to go for assistance. So we're looking to see the, uh, the increase in the number of uh, services that are being provided, uh, building a robust referral network within the hubs, 
and then externally so that individuals can leverage resources that are available out there that they may not have uh, a familiarity with. Do you feel like our community is at a tipping point? I mean, is this just one piece of the puzzle to solve our violent crime problem? Obviously, we've seen it tick up again this year, and it, it sort of just feels like this unbreakable cycle sometimes. Right, and I see this as providing a support to those who have been victimized. And so this is not a law or a uh, crime suppression strategy. This, our role is to support those who have been victimized, who are hurting, uh, who may not be, um, um, who, those who are hiding within their homes um, and have not come to surface. And we feel that uh, through our network, we will be able to reach those individuals who are vulnerable, looking for assistance, just not knowing how to access the assistance. So it's really a providing um, a layer of support for those who have been victimized or who live in communities that have been victimized. And then one follow-up question that I had. So you mentioned that with virtual services, you may get a, a larger reach. Right. Can you expand into that? Yeah, one of the, there's a lot of stigma with accessing mental health services. Uh, for the populations that we're serving, there are also barriers to participation, such as having to identify and find childcare, um, dealing with the barriers uh, related to uh, finding reliable transportation. And so those barriers are eliminated by using a virtual platform. And then this also takes away the stigma of having to walk into an office, identifying yourself and making yourself even more vulnerable. And so we believe that using a virtual platform will have a greater reach uh, and that it reduces the stigma and also reduces some of those barriers to uh, participation in a traditional program setting. And then tactically, the fact that one constant among all of us is that everyone has a cell phone and everyone can become virtual via the cell phone, which allows us to communicate with this population in ways that historically we would not ever be able to do because alluding back to what uh, Les just talked about, the fact that most people don't want to walk into a counseling environment and be told that there's a mental health trauma response that needs to occur with them personally or with their family. So how do you anticipate doing that initial outreach? How will people find out about the program? Well, part of it will, we will have a robust, uh, we're creating a robust marketing uh, platform where the hubs will be intimately engaged in that process. They will use their own networks. Uh, all of the hubs that we've identified have a long-standing tradition of providing services within the local community. And so we'll have them um, outreach into the community. And then anyone who comes into those hub centers for any type of service will be screened for these services as well. And so that's how we attempt to, uh, that's our attempt to amplify our approach at reaching more people and more participants within those local communities. And the hubs that we've identified are actually entrenched into the neighborhoods. And so they're well entrenched in the neighborhoods. The, uh, they already have that um, uh, relationships that have been built with those local residents in those communities in those neighborhoods. And so the trust factor has already been built and established. But the program is citywide, not neighborhood-based? Citywide, yes. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful.